So welcome to the uh, most exciting part of the, I'm just kidding. Um, so I am, <laughs> I am all about getting you guys to working on your podcast as fast as possible um, because I am anticipating everyone having a, a wide range of skill sets and comforts with uh, different technology and different experience, you know, all the teacher stuff. Um, and so I'm all about uh, giving you guys some tools to learn at your own pace, sort of. We built a couple of, actually, I think they're really nice tutorials on how to do some of the technology portion of it. Um, and I, even with middle school students, we let them work at it at their own pace because some were dumb, uh, done. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh no. Uh, can I restart the recording or no? Uh, some of them were done in like five minutes and some of them took a little bit longer. So um, so I'm, I'm all about getting you guys to that as quickly as possible. Plus, I already said twice I'm a STEM person at the STEM Center. And so I, I can imagine many of the things, many of my English language arts ideas would be a little bit behind where you guys would be anyway. Um, apparently, we have to do quotes at the beginning, so this is mine from the uh, the guy that <laughs> uh, the guy that yeah you get to do yours tomorrow. Um, the guy that did like StoryCorps uh, and does a lot of like really great oral histories and podcasts. I'm not going to read it to you because I'm very nervous about having to read in front of a bunch of English teachers, um, but. But this has been the case, the, this, as I said before, uh, with Digital East St. Louis, we did oral history interviews with seniors at the Senior Center, and it was great because they couldn't leave. Um, so they were a nice captive um, group. But they also loved it. I mean, we thought we were gonna have trouble getting volunteers, and it was really tough to make people stop talking. So, um, so you know, I've, this has been a whole interesting experience for me. So oral histories, uh, one thing that uh, being sort of a, I'm kind of a history nut, uh, and what's interesting about the oral histories is you're just going to get something that's very personal. Um, and so how you can use it in your classroom is going to be a little bit different than you're not going to be learning just strictly a, um, a specific piece of history. It might be less factual, but you, you can get some really interesting perspective. On it, uh, I'm all about having worked for a couple of years with the teaching with primary sources in the Library of Congress. I'm all about primary sources now, and what you get from somebody that experienced it is really very interesting, um, especially if kids have been learning, you know, a lot of dates or something more dry or something along those lines. Um, those are two guiding questions. I'm not going to make you answer them, and I'm not going to make you listen to all of my ideas for that, uh, but I did have, please be the next slide, nope, um, I did have a few, I, no, okay, uh, but I did want to do, I have a couple of examples later, um, but I did want to listen to one, uh, I believe the one I have here is from uh, some company and their ad, um, so StoryCorps, I don't know if you're familiar with it. it, it some of you, uh, many of you have probably gone into school crying on Fridays after listening to StoryCorps on NPR. <laughs> but really, there's, there's a great app for it. It collects oral histories uh, and records them at the Library of Congress forever and ever and ever. And typically, it's just two people that know each other or a few people that know each other talking. And some of them are really interesting. Uh, the one I originally had on here, which I thought was great is um, a woman speaking to the man that sh uh, shot and killed her only son um, and they're like really good friends now and he calls her mom and she calls him son and they live next to each other it's, but that would get a little bit depressing a little bit fast um, so instead I went with now that I'm realizing this uh, I went with one talking about the time the challenger exploded um, so maybe a little bit less uh, upbeat, but still. Um, so you, m you might find yourself talking about something related to a historical event, and rather than pure factual, you can get something a little bit different from an oral history.
sorry, can I make a quick comment? Yes. I just found it interesting how, with the animation, it's not really about the story itself, but how with the animation, um, when he was walking into the library, how they portrayed the um, white patrons as much bigger than him as the black patron. I just thought that was a really interesting example of showing that down. That's, uh, that's good foreshadowing for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, while this was related to something you might be doing with the Challenger exploding, what kind of perspective do we get that's different from this, but still valuable? What's different about this than, say, an interview from somebody that day about, um, you know, watching it explode? It's obviously more personal because it was his brother. Right. Um, I, you know, when I when I think about it, I think about the, uh, I mean, bringing it, bringing it a little bit more internal or closer to home. Uh, I think it's there's an interest level there that kind of changes when you see a bunch of pictures of people just in astronauts, you know, uniforms. That's one thing, but now like that's clearly a person and an interesting person. Um, and I, my favorite part is the thank you, ma'am. Um, you know, just that that's an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting perspective on a historical event that's not the actual event necessarily, but still valuable. And it's, it's a little bit harder being a... Uh, I always felt when I was in the classroom that I had ten times as many things to teach as I had time to teach. Um, I don't know if that's the case for you. Um, but so I, I always... When I started teaching, I felt like this sort of outside the box sort of thing kind of got left behind a little bit more um, just because it, it felt sort of extra or on top of other things. But it, if it makes it easier uh, to get through the, not get through, but if it makes it easier to teach and learn and the students more interested, I think it's always worth it. Um, especially just getting a, Something different is nice. Uh, so StoryCorps has a million and a half of these. Um, there's several other oral history projects that are good, but StoryCorps is my favorite. And it was always rough going into work on Fridays. Yes? Did you say StoryCorps is, is it just a collection, or is it something you can add to it? Uh, you can add to it. I believe you can just download the app and add to it yourself. Um, and, but there are... You know, it, I think it started as a collection, and then they started going out to places. But then, it was very much uh, like setting up a booth in a mall or something like that. Um, there, are, I know there are booths in New York, and when it first started up, uh, this this little old couple went in, and it's one of the most popular ones ever of just them talking about their lives. And so, I highly recommend losing an afternoon listening to those. Um, it'll be an emotional afternoon, though. So a big part of this that students frequently struggle with are the interviewing skills. Um, the questioning, the hardest part, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with most of this, uh, developing open-ended questioning skills isn't necessarily easy. Uh, the hardest thing we found was teaching them to wait. Um, when, when we were working on it, there's something especially when you're interviewing a great about sitting and just like being nestled in that silence and waiting for someone, you know, the, until they feel so uncomfortable, they have to start talking. Uh, but that's where you get a little bit more authentic answers sometimes. Um, when we went for, so the Digital East St. Louis project, I think you mentioned we did food, education, environment, music, and sports in East St. Louis. Uh, so we did projects around those and students like we would learn about the city or they would learn about the city and talk about um, talk about it through the lens of like food in the city or you know the history of education in the city. So when we went to do these oral history interviews, each group contributed two or three questions. So whenever you'd go to do the oral history interview with somebody, you would ask questions about each of those topics and the hardest part for them to was to wait and let somebody answer fully and let them get off topic a little bit. So that's 
um, because a lot of times somebody wants to talk about something and that's going to be more interesting a lot of the time. Uh, I'm very, to a fault, very open in discovery learning and uh, lenient and don't, at, um, with, you know, some restrictions. Uh, I, you probably noticed I don't like to give a lot of direction if I don't have to um, because most of the time students come up with more creative things than I would have and so you know, um, I don't feel like I'm a very creative person and so I kind of just lend that to them. Um, and so I feel more comfortable and I felt more comfortable letting them deal with people that wanted to talk about whatever they would. Uh, you might not, and that's fine as well. Uh, the other part is the recording. Um, we did, to teach them, uh, we did a recording scavenger hunt. And so we gave them these little handheld recorders and had them go <coughs> try to find, uh, I mean, we came up with little things for them to say, but try to give examples of how to create a bad recording, basically. And then we went back and listened to them together and like, what was the problem here? So if you're too far away from the recorder, it's gonna sound bad. So what we did was we made them be far away from the recorder, listen to it and they say, oh, it's way too quiet or I have to be the right distance here, you know, too close. Um, why is it bad out or why is it tough outside? Uh, things you have to watch out for when you're recording and you guys are probably gonna experience that when you do your recordings because we have even nicer microphones and like you can't record in this room because that little noise is the only thing you'll be able to hear it's insane um so you know you'll have to spread out and try to find a place that will work for your recording uh again i'm big on like that sort of open rather than telling them you know you have to be at the right distance and have to be doing these things i'd rather them go out and like make those mistakes and then hear it themselves usually they can tell when something sounds bad so Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. we'll, 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 I was going to say, we'll probably send you way more than you want, but I'm, yeah. We also have one for uh, video recording as well, um, which was, we do, right? I didn't just make that up. No, no, we did. We had the different shots on it. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. The which thing? Video yes, it, it might be. Broadcast. Sure. Okay, yes, thank you. I have it somewhere. I'm just um, curious because um, I know access to equipment might be an issue too. So, how many of you have a situation where students can use phones that school and they can't use their phones after they go to recording? Like, are you guys able to do that? Yeah. 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 Yeah
it's easier to grade in out of school time because you don't have to grade them. Um, but you know, one kid being really interested in the recording side of it, and one person being really interested in the editing side of it, and one person being really interested in the questioning, letting them do that a little bit more. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend to know how to do that really effectively in the classroom, um, but I think it's worth a, if you can, it's worth a try. Is it not? Okay, podcasting. Um, I like listening to the radio a lot. Uh, I think it's a pretty good. Um, it, it, it's a pretty good. I don't words. Uh, it's a pretty good example. Or sure, that that'll work. Um, radio and podcasting feel very similar to me, um, and so. Some thoughts I had for uh, using them in the classroom or where I probably would have. Would, I'm, uh, if you can, I don't know how your schools necessarily work. I think you can concentrate on some different aspects of what would typically be writing a paper. Um, they can, you can explore a little bit in, a little bit more in depth. Um, things like uh, putting together a couple of oral history interviews and finding themes across them. Uh, I think is a different sort of skill that would be hard to do necessarily writing. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to um, teach English well because clearly I don't words. Uh, but you know, we I I heard a little bit before talking about making social media accounts for like a character. Uh, you could have them make podcasts. So have like a character making podcasts along the way instead of just social media posts. Uh, I thought that would be interesting. Putting them again, that it's that primary source, putting them in the place of somebody. As you were talking, I was thinking about the emphasis now on shows after shows that analyze what happened in the show. And that would be kind of a cool thing to do with a novel where students just sort of talk through, oh, mm. I like that this happened with the character or that happened. Yeah. It's even more prevalent on um, YouTube that does yeah. a, a lot like of. A reunion show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I'm thinking about the show after The Walking Dead or after Breaking Bad. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, the other one was just, I, I feel like I'm a lazy person, but you could make a structure of a podcast in the files and just replace the sound of you talking in the middle, so like the intro music and outro music and whatever you need, uh, and just talk for two minutes each week and send that out to parents. It's just an, I feel like that would be easier for me, but again, because I'm not a writer. Um, so the two tools, the sort of standard one is Audacity. That's this one. It's free. Uh, this would be if you're able to get things installed. It's sort of a typical one. I don't know where your IT departments are or how frustrating that necessarily is. Um, but Audacity is one that works, and all of these computers have it on them. Uh, it, it works for just about anything you need, and there are so, so many tutorials online. None of them are as good as ours, but there, um, there are some online. And the other one that Ben found was Soundtrap. Uh, if you are a Chromebook school or just want to do something web-based, Soundtrap is great for that. Also, um, my students used to love, I don't know where they even found it, but they loved making beats um, in their spare time. I used to play like the stupid browser games when I was in school, and my students always just made beats. And so um, Soundtrack is really, really great for that. Uh, so um, if you have some, I mean, to the point where you can like make a piano and drum, like it's and drums in there. I'd recommend taking a look at it. Uh, but I think when we make our podcasts, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, we don't have to split up based on those, but you can use either one. Doesn't really matter to me. We have, uh, we have tutorials, tutorials for, for both. Yes. yes. So, um, yeah, in your fancy. In here we have the Audacity ones, and then in the back there is a Soundtrap one, and they are very, very similar. And just to clarify one thing, Audacity will not. Yes, that's, yes. Uh, so that's why we have Soundtrack as well, because that one does work. Right. 
Soundtrap works on Chromebooks, and Audacity um, does not. However, there's a real benefit to doing the web-based version because for some reason I feel like kids don't know how to use flash drives correctly. So, I mean, I've never been more frustrated than having a student put it in, uh, open up a document, pull it out and hand it to the person next to them and have them put it in and open a document and then no one can save. Um, so, anywho, um, there, there is a benefit to the web-based. And if, like, like we said, if you have a Chromebook or if you're a Chromebook school, Soundtrap is your way to go. That project management-based stuff that Matt is talking about too, that is the trickiest stuff. Um, and particularly <coughs> St. Louis, we use Google Drive for just about everything for them, and we had dummy accounts. They each got their own, which then was really frustrating because Google requires you to give them a phone number for every account. So we basically went through all of our Google accounts possible on every phone number that existed in the program in order to make the dummy accounts. Um, Up to and including graduate students that are yeah. no longer at this university. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, if those are things that you are worried about or thinking about, just let me know and I can give you some tips and tricks for how to deal with those project management issues, how to make sure you're saving things well and archiving things. And, um, we have tutorials for that, too. We do have tutorials for that, We have yes. Google Drive tutorials with, like, the little pictures and the, um, <laughs> very similar to the Audacity ones. Although they've changed their interface recently. I know some of your schools of actually have Google accounts attached to, to their student IDs. Uh, the other thing, and I'm not 100% positive on this uh, when it's happening, but the Chrome OS is becoming Android or they're merging them. And so in theory, any Android app that you use, should just about anyone should work with the Chromebooks. And there's a bunch of audio editing and um, sound recording and a bunch of stuff like that, potentially. Anyway, these are two that we've used and work well. I made a song in Soundtrap. It's terrible, but I made one. Um, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> so I know it was a mistake. Uh, so I think that's, no, it's not quite. OK. Uh, so we'll get going. We'll make ours. I want you guys to be able to spend time and have us around to be able to help you in some way shape or form as best we can. Uh, the important steps, the things that you're going to want to make sure you do is the storyboarding part, which hopefully you have a start on. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, being an engineering teacher, I would have them design something and then they'd get started and the design and what they made had nothing to do with each other. Uh, and so I'm big on updating the storyboard, not necessarily being strictly tied to it because you don't want to take away their learning at that spot, like where they realize, oh, I don't want to do this. You don't want to get them, have them stuck to what they said they were going to do. But you don't want to abandon the story. So have them update it. I use, uh, we used for the program, we used Post-it notes a lot. So we made Post-it notes of like parts of interviews that they wanted to use and like parts of their intro and just move those around. And then when they decided to put something in a different place, just move the post-it note. Um, I like post-it notes now, so. Um, you'll need to do some recording, obviously, and then the editing. Uh, the only things that I think you, like my sort of requirements, um, and if I was doing this in a classroom, part of the rubric would be this, would be I think you need a scripted intro and probably outro. Um, you need to cut and join clips in some way. You can't just start talk and be done. Um, you have to do some sort of audio manipulation. Uh, that means like a fade in, fade out. Uh, you can quiet something down, louden something. Is that wording? Uh, <laughs> and, and have some music in there somewhere. Uh, the reason I do that is as a tech teacher, um, if, you, if I say you have to do those things, then you're practicing those skills and just in some way, shape, or form. Um, when I was in school, I would have looked for the, I would have been the kid that went and talked the whole time and just had like music ready to turn on and turn off. Um, so I didn't have to do any of the work. And so I, you know, the, I feel like the worst students sometimes make the best teachers. Um, ooh, I didn't mean any of you though, sorry. Uh, well, best teachers, anyway. So 
And then we'll, we'll do a little bit of presentation with them at the very end. And so we all have groups, we have ideas, we can pass out microphones. Um, I think every group has a laptop. And if they don't, we, can, we have some laptops. Uh, this room, all of these computers have the software on it. So if you don't want to do the editing on one of your computers, you can come back in here for that. But you will quickly realize that the recording is a nightmare if you are not in a very quiet place. So um, you may need to, I think most of these classrooms are open around here and there's some space outside. The metal walls are great for recording. It, it's very true. You can hear you again and again and again as you talk. <laughs> so, um, Oh, the last spot, uh, and this is shamelessly stolen from Ben's yeah, uh, tomorrow we'll one. It's that's why there's the abrupt change in theme. Is I didn't even bother to make it match. Um, so, although I realize now I'm going before you, I could have just pretended I made this. Um, except, and it would be before you told them about Creative Commons and attribution. So these are all uh, places with free music. Um, now. It's not necessarily always the best music, but there's some good music on there. Uh, the music I was playing before was from Free Music Archive, and, but that wasn't the only music on there. But all of these are free to use. And so if, if you don't keep that up there, that's on this sheet. The list is oh, on that sheet, so you don't have to copy that down by hand. Uh, this should be the last one, last piece of paper in your folder. This is from my And go questions? forth and prosper. Questions? Oh, yes. Yes. I have a yes. So I've played around with the story for like um, just recording app before, mm -hmm. but is there a thing on their website that helps you do like the animations, or is that like something totally different? I think they. I, yes. I think that's yeah. I think that's they hired the somebody to do show. that for just okay. those. Yeah. Okay. However, depending on the age of your students. Chances are some of them can do that better than you'd believe. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Um, that would probably be an opportunity for somebody to get some extra credit or some side project or Is there like something. a certain program that you know of that you could Absolutely, there is a certain program, I'm sure, but yeah. I have no idea okay. what that program okay. is. So, um, so I, but, but I throw them on YouTube and I'm sure they can find, okay. yeah, it's, any more questions, comments, concerns? Okay. When you are ready, I will be waiting at that door with microphones. And while I was talking, I tore this piece of paper up. <laughs> <laughs>